Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and today we're diving back into the theory craft of aircraft carriers in the last year with this battle report from the bridge of Tier 8 British carrier HMS Implacable. Now, I am still a pretty... I'm a bit of a carrier noob, right? I've played probably... I've played a lot of Enterprise in the last year, but I've not really spent much time diving under the hood of what is going on with carrier mechanics, carrier numbers, kind of how these ships play, how they're meant to play, so you can kind of make some inferences when you start looking at the data. Once upon a time, I worked on the wiki a lot, a whole lot, 15, 20 hours a week sometimes, and I kept a spreadsheet, I still do, of all the various attributes in the game detection and all the rest of these kinds of things detection values and gun arc i mean gun yeah, just a lot of data right i data mined all this stuff out of the wiki sometimes out of third party sites like game models 3d and i did this because i wanted to be able to talk intelligently when i was comparing ships and i still use that data when i when i when i talk about ships and make review videos and these kinds of things but as i i had never really in the last year spent any time doing that for carriers and over the last weekend, I started, I started that process, finally, after things have kind of been calm for a while, really updating AA values, and that caused me to stop and go, well, what about carriers? How do I start comparing carriers in the new system? And so I found myself doing a lot of data gathering, and I spent a lot of time looking at the Tier 8 carriers in particular, because that's where we have the most variety. Tier 8 has, I think, seven or eight different aircraft carriers whereas most other tiers have three, maybe five. If you're lucky, I think down at tier six, maybe we've got three or four. So here we are spawning onto the north side of Estuary in HMS Implacable. Now you've already seen, it's one of the things that I did. I took an early rocket strike out. I put a solid hit into an enemy gate, and I was pretty happy with that result. One of the things I discovered uh, going through the numbers about Implacable, Implacable is a very, very difficult carrier to play and a very difficult carrier to get your brain around because her planes have a lot of health. That's nice, but they have incredibly slow reload speeds and she has very, very few of these planes on her deck. So she, more than almost any other tier rate carrier currently in the game, she punishes bad choices about where you take your planes and what you do with them. If you get a squadron wiped, if you take a bunch of plane casualties, Implacable is slow to reload those planes than almost any other carrier on the board. Now, I started with an uh, attack on that gate out west, and then I saw they were capping they were capping uh, D over here to the east, so I brought the rocket planes back, but those Kageros didn't have their AA up, so I wasn't able to detect them in time. British rockets take some time to line up. However, this Molotov is over here, and if you've ever shot at a Molotov, you know how squishy they are. You know how, how little armor they have. And rockets in general, even pretty much anybody's, anybody's rockets, do pretty good work against light cruisers. So some of what you're going to see me doing in this game, especially with these attacks on the Molotov, I'm trying to kind of see what I can get out of them. Right? I don't really know what kind of performance to expect in some of these attacks. I haven't played Implacable much. I don't have a lot of experience. This is probably the first game I've played in Implacable in six months, if not longer. So I, I take the rockets out quite a bit. And, and you saw me earlier, right? When I first started the game, I did a pre-drop to send four, two of my planes back. That was intentional. I didn't want to take too many casualties too early because of how slowly these rocket planes regenerate. Implacable has among the slowest regeneration rates in Tier 8, period. So plane... Plane kills, plane deaths for Implacable hurt almost more than any other tier 8 carrier. And it's one of the reasons that Implacable, I think, probably up tiers worse than any other tier 8 carrier. When she's in a, a tier 8 game like this game, she's passable. But I, I feel like she's really, really struggles when she's up tiered because AA values get higher, but your plane health, obviously, you don't, I don't get magically more plane health because I'm in a higher tier game, but... Um, but yeah, the plane the planes don't respawn any faster. Now I'm bringing this rocket strike back. My goal here is to bring it across the center to get eyes on this New Mexico. Now one of the friendly destroyers, and I forget if it's the Gate or the Cossack, has already put a bunch of damage into this guy. He just ate a boatload of torpedoes. He's flooding. You can see there. But I decide I don't want to risk letting this guy get away with a heal or a repair. I'm bringing this rocket strike in. I want this guy dead. And as it turns out, I'm going to hit him for about a thousand damage or so, and kind of and kind of Hoover up the kill from that friendly Gade, uh, Gade uh, that, that he probably should have gotten. But hey, a kill's a kill. 
It's all he's off the board. That's the key. But that four eight at the center of the board showed me something. That Vladivostok there, you see in their C cap is more or less all by himself. And that's going to give me the opportunity to try out what I really pulled Implacable out of the dustbin to try, and that is her Torpedo Squadrons. Implacable has the highest torpedo flooding chance of Tier 8 carriers. 63% is the flood chance on these torpedoes. Now, you, I'll put a link down below. You have to understand how flood chance works in this game. But trust me when I tell you that is the highest number available amongst aerial torpedoes at Tier 8. And so what I want to try and do, what I'm really bringing the ship into the game four is to see if I can stack a flood or two on an enemy battleship and really, really punish them for their positional choices. This Vladivostok is affording me a good opportunity here. He's basically stationary in the sea cap. I bring out the entire squadron. I use my, my heel on the way in, intentionally trying to make sure that these planes survive. I want at least one, if not two more drops out of this squadron. The mistake I make here is I turn to port rather than starboard. If I had turned to the right there, this attack that I'm making right now would have been made at a much better angle now that he's turned his engines on. He did take a flood, he did repair it, but the problem is the angle that I dropped these torpedoes at, he's moving away from them. I'm actually not going to get those to, to land very well. That was a terrible, terrible drop on my part. Whereas if I'd come in the other way, I would have had a much better attack on his broadside. That's one of those finer points of carrier attacks, particularly torpedo attacks, that you don't start to discover until you really get into the mechanics of playing carriers. One of the things that I find about the, some of the folks who complain most vocally about carriers is that they don't, especially new carriers, they haven't taken the time to invest in, in learning how these mechanics work and understand the challenges that the carrier player is up against. So that's one of the reasons I've been trying to make some of these videos. I made a bunch of Enterprise videos last summer. I'm trying to do some of that here to try and just help people understand, look, this is the theory and the, and the math and what's going on like behind the interactions you're seeing. I'm kind of jawing off in chat a little bit. We're three ships down now, very, very quickly here. Only, you know, six and a half minutes into this game, seven and a half minutes into this game, as, I, again, I'm trying to put some more torpedoes and get a flood to stick onto this Vladivostok. This time, I turn correctly. I turn towards his bow as I come in for yet another attack. I do land a flood up forward. But I'm struggling a little bit with the speed of these torpedoes. The British torpedoes are not the fastest, very much like the American ones. And so I'm only going to get one torpedo out of those two to drop to land, and I'm not going to, uh, not going to get much. I'm not going to get the other flood I was looking for. But there is currently a flood ticking up on that Vladivostok. Oh, no, there was. He was flooding for a while. He must have, he must have healed it. Yeah, he healed it somewhere along the way when I wasn't looking. But so my little bit of experiment, my little bit of theory crafting worked. I got good flood damage into that guy. Not able to work to flex it as much as I would have preferred. And I reach for the rockets. Now, this is a bit of a crutch. I probably should have brought back the bombs. My goal here is I know his DCP is down. I want to get a fire. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in with the rocket attack. I'm going to get the fire. It's going to stick for a little while. Um, but I probably should have brought back the bombs because I feel like I probably could have gotten more out of them. Now, what works out, though, because with the rocket squadron in hand, there's a... Kagero right underneath me that that guy is a high value target 1500 HP couple of these rockets ought to be able to knock him out even with the friendly Bismarck there I should be able to get the, this attack off and yep yep carriers are really good about fishing out damage destroyers from positions they don't want to be in <laughs> so that's an opportunity that I take right there as for the first time I reach for implacables bombs now a lot of talk has been made about the British bombs, and I find that at certain tiers they work pretty well. Unfortunately, I do not feel like Tier 8's Implacable is one of those places. She only brings six of these planes out, and she the reload on them is... Each individual plane is like two Fight minutes. Airborne. It's kind of nutty, guys. She drops a lot of bombs. Each individually bomb does not have a very high fire chance, but with so many bombs, statistically, you're probably bound to get at least one fire. My initial thinking is I'm going to go after this Dallas and get him off the board. But when I see the Bismarck here in the cap, I think, ooh, that is a big, fat, juicy target. I really should, I really should take this opportunity. And I get a really good salvo in this guy. Check this out. Two fires, four pens, but mm, what I should have done, 
I make a mistake here. I pull them out rather than going back for one mm -hmm. more run and getting those fires to stick. So that's on me. Some of this is some of this you're seeing seeing the, the process of me learning kind of how to play the carrier. And I'm making mistakes. I'm absolutely making mistakes here. That's one of the reasons I'm showing you guys this video. I want to talk you through the process of what I'm thinking and also show you where I'm doing things wrong that I could even be doing better than, than, than I end up doing. And this, this game turns out to be okay. Now, with a low-health Dallas down on the H line, I know, them, I know my rockets will do good work against light cruisers. I pull out the full rocket squadron, and I'm going after this guy. He popped his, his um, uh, defensive fighter earlier, his catapult fighter earlier. We see there, you just watched it land. So I know he's not... I don't have to deal with the fighter. I'm only going to deal with his AA, possibly defensive fire, because Dallas comes with defensive fire. He's turning in at exactly the kind of angle I want, but RNG doesn't bless me. I get about half the damage I need. And again, I realize too late I should have turned to port rather than starboard to make this next attack because now I've wandered into the AA bubble of the friendly, the enemy Lexington that I didn't know was there. See him behind me. So now I try to get off another attack on this Dallas. <laughs> I'm going to start taking that damn thing off the hook when I do recordings. <laughs> And unfortunately, I leave him literally clinging to life on like a thousand HP or something. Airborne. And because of the slow reload on these planes, I've now left myself where I have all I have left on deck is an understrength rocket squadron. It's like four planes. I pick it up initially and then I realize eh, I don't want to do this. So, no, we're not going to do this. I go back for the torpedoes. We're up on caps, tied on ships, upside down on health. Eight minutes to play. So my goal now is I'm looking at the cap. I'm seeing our Massachusetts. I'm seeing the enemy Bismarck. I'm also seeing our friendly Kagero being harassed by these Lexington rocket planes. And so I decide what I want to do is I want to get over there quickly. You see me there. I burn I burn uh, one of my uh, engine boost reloads. I want to try and drop a fighter over this Kagero to give him a little bit of cover. And then I'm going to bring, I'm going to turn to starboard, come in across the island with a little bit of cover and bring a little bit of cover from the AA and bring this torpedo strike in on the Bismarck. So I'm just about where I want to be. There we go. Put the fighter down, turn to starboard, come in as the gate is leading some smoke for this Bismarck. He's trying to turn back away. He's getting beat up, but I just need to get a couple of torpedoes into this guy and I think I'll get him off the board. So we put two in the water there. And again, I make the smart decision. This time, because of how he's positioned, I turn the other way, knowing he's going to have to turn back to the south. I get a torp and a flood as I go in. But because I he floods out right there, I have to very quickly adjust my attack and decide, well, might as well take a shot at this gade. I mean, he's right here in front of me. So I put those torpedoes into the water thinking, all right, I'm, I'm, you know, whatever, I got him off. And Halo, surprise kill. That worked out. I'm not really going to complain about that. So again, I'm looking at a low health Molotov that I already know. And I'm looking at two low health cruisers down here, or last spotted along the H line, that I know my rockets will do good work against from a penetration standpoint. So that's where I'm going right now. I'm trying to pull my carrier back away from the A cap because I suspect in my brain, I'm thinking these guys are probably going to go try and cap A and I don't want to give them that opportunity. But as I fly down the three, four line here, I, I don't see anybody. Where the hell are these guys? I know the Lexington was last spotted down here. I don't know where he is now. He's probably running back towards the east along the J-line or something. And I'm, I'm, I'm really at a loss. Okay, there's the Dallas. The Dow he's in the sea cap. Well, where's the bloody Molotov? I don't know. I'll find him in a minute. With 2,000 HP, I figure a single rocket strike, a single good solid rocket. Oh, there's the Molotov. A single good rocket strike should wipe out this Dallas. He puts his catapult fighter up. It's a tax I'm willing to pay to get him off the board. But once again, I get a little trolley dispersion. He does make the right play. He kind of turns in and... Ugh. On 450 HP, I decide to leave him alone and go for the Molotov. Because the Molotov is now a threat to me. If you look at my board position where the Molotov is... But the fighter extracts his toll as I only have one surviving plane to put some rockets into the Molotov. Maintaining present course. Rough. I'm, le I'm relying on my teammates to finish off this Dallas. There they go. And so now I'm trying to bring my last two rocket planes to bear on this Molotov as time ticks away. And um, now, right as I pull the trigger on these rockets, whoosh, and that's it. So I guess I'm kind of highlighting this replay for a couple of reasons. One is 
more or less kind of started, I wanted to start talking through this series about some of the things that I'm, I'm looking into, right? Like the timing of specific planes in terms of their regeneration cycles and how many you have on deck compared to their contemporaries at tier eight. Uh, I'm highlighting Implacable first because I feel like of all the tier eight carriers, she is probably unquestionably the weakest. You can have a decent game in her. You see here, four kills, some average damage, pedestrian damage, 70,000 damage or so. It's not too shabby, but not amazing, right? Um, but the thing I really want to highlight, I feel like, is her torpedoes. She's probably, I, I, I needed more work out of the bombers than I got in this game. And that's on me to learn more about how to use them. Uh, I, I feel like I've got, I understand the rockets pretty well. Rockets are pretty easy to use. Understanding that you can use them against destroyers and light cruisers. And as you saw there in a pinch, I did manage to get a fire on a battleship, but that's not really what you should be doing. You should really be reaching for the dive bombers when you want to set fires on capital ships. But the torpedoes, that flood chance and the possibility of being able to stack floods or at least land good solid floods on enemy battleships is the one thing that I think Implacable really stands out amongst the other tier 8 carriers as like able to do because the flood chance on her torps. But she can't really afford to lose planes to do it because her reload speeds are just terrible bringing those planes up out of the hangar. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I got a few more of these coming for Indomitable and Kaga as the week continues. Be safe out there, and I'll catch you next time.